I want to explain to you how calendars and activity durations really work together, how they're enmeshed. Let's get started. This is a really simple project, calendar example with five activities, four days of duration each. Now, I'm using the same layout that we've been using up to now, but I'm going to tweak it. So let's hit our column chooser button and let's expand general and add in the calendar column. I'll put it after activity name. Great. And I'll just adjust my column widths a little bit. Now have a look. We're using my calendar, which is a five day by 12 hour calendar in all of these activities. Now, to help us analyze, this is one thing that you will need to do whenever you're working with calendars. If you don't do this, I highly recommend you do. Go ahead and change your user preferences. Edit, menu, user preferences. And let's add in two decimal places on durations. Okay, two decimal places there. I always like to have two decimal places on my units and my durations because I'm trying to make sure I don't have any partial durations. Now, have a look at the first activity, activity A. It's four days in duration. I'm going to change that calendar because I want you to understand what happens when I do. If I click the calendar chooser and change this to the other project calendar I have available here, my cal, which is a five day by five hour calendar per day, let's click and see what happens. Have a look at the duration. The duration of that activity has now increased from four days to 9.6 days. And that's because we changed the calendar. So there's a bunch of things that are happening here that I really want you to understand. Okay. When we type in activity durations, the actual data that is getting stored in P6's database is not stored in days. It's always stored in hours. So if I have an activity like A1000 and it has a four day duration, that activity's duration is stored in hours and it's first converted into hours based on the database that I have assigned to that activity. So here we have, in my example, a four day activity times 10 hours per day. It gives me 40 hours that's stored in the database. Whenever that information is displayed on screen, the reverse process happens. We're reading from the database. We take our 40 hours and again, we're processing it through our calendar and we're dividing it by 10 hours per day to give us a four day duration on screen. So anytime you're seeing a day duration, it's actually been converted from the hours that are actually stored in the database. And it goes through this hours per day field. I'm going to show you the, where that hours per day field is in the calendars. If you go to enterprise calendars and edit any or modify any of the calendars here, you'll see this button here. It says time periods. If you click time periods, you'll see this field here. It says hours per day and in there. You can actually type in the conversion factor. So based on 12 hours per day, if I put in a four day activity, I'm actually storing 48 hours in the database. Wait, is this time periods button grayed out for you? If it is, let me show you how to fix that. Let's cancel and close this. There's another global setting that controls whether or not we can use those time periods at all, or whether it should be set globally for the entire database and all calendars. That settings here under admin, admin preferences, and head on down to the time periods tab. See, there's a checkbox here. It says use assigned calendar to specify the number of work hours per each time period. What that basically means is make that time periods box available on each calendar. I always like to have that checked on. If you don't have it checked on, go ahead and check it on as long as you have admin privileges. Okay. If you check it on, then this hour per day is ignored and we're using the one that's set within each calendar. Let's close. So when I changed the calendar on this activity, it also affected the duration by multiplying it by a different factor. Remember what was stored in the database was four 
times 12. The original calendar that was there was 48 hours. But now it's taking 48 and dividing it by 5 to give me 9.6. So my calendar affects my durations, and changing the calendars can change all of the durations in your schedule. That's not something you want. You don't want to be changing all of the durations in your calendar. Those durations are based on the estimates that come from the estimating process. So you need to be aware of this because it can happen without you even knowing it. How would you fix this? Well, one of the things we could do is if we had to change a few activities to a new calendar, and I would just use a fill down like that, but I actually want to keep my four day duration, I can simply come back and re-enter them all in. Right? And now I have four days based on this calendar and four days based on the next calendar. Another way to make this a little bit more automated is to use a global change. 